Hello YouTube. Today we're making votive candles. Those little candles that are made like pillar candles, but are burnt like container candles in a small fitting container. So to make votive candles, you will need a set of votive cups. And a matching number of wick pins. You can make votive candles without wick pins, but really it's not worth the headache. First parts of the video, we'll make them with paraffin wax that's already in a double boiler. And a bit further on in the video, we'll see how we can make them with other types of waxes. So I'll make three different types the plain color one votives with uh, horizontal layers and here I'll make some oblique layers and for that I'm using an egg box that will be used to hold the votive cups. It's a good idea to lubricate the pin of the wick pin slightly. It makes removing the finished candle a lot easier. So I'm just using some baking spray here. Just going to put a little bit of oil on the pin itself. There. So the wax is fully melted now. When you make multiple colors and you're using multiple pouring pots, always make sure you don't go over the other pot when you remove one, or you could easily drop water in the wax, which is not a good idea. So wipe your pots carefully. Let's check the temperature of the wax. It is now around 75 degrees or 170, which is the perfect pouring temperature for votive candles. Pour slowly and try not to pour on the wick pin itself, especially if you're making layered candles. So the first one will be a plain purple color. Second one is a layered purple white. So when the mold is tilted like it is here, it's very difficult not to pour on the pin itself. But even if you do like I did here, don't worry too much. It's pretty easy to clean it up. So now the white color. Try and pour just one millimeter under the rim. Just like that, it makes over pouring later on much easier. Okay, now while the wax sets, I'm putting the pouring pots back in a double boiler. And that's what it looks like for now. As you can see, the wick pin is covered in wax. You can just use your heat gun to melt the wax that's on the wick pin and only direct it to the pin itself, not the wax underneath. There you go, all clean. So after about 20 minutes, the wax is set. And if you're making oblique layers, you can now remove the votive cups from the egg box. And when the wax is ready,
we'll proceed to the second pour. Wax is at 75 degrees or 170, which is perfect for a second pour of the single layer. And this time you can fill it all the way up until it almost overflows. So that's the two single layer votives done. And we'll now let the wax cool down to 70 degrees. And do the second pour on the other votives. Again, this time you can fill them really all the way to the top. I do the second pour roughly after 20 minutes. If you wait any longer, there's a risk the wax will pull off from the sides of the molds and you might get some nasty results if you pour them. All done. That's what they look like after about 20 minutes. And you can see that after 45 minutes, there's been some shrinking of the wax so we need to do a top off just making some release holes to help the new layer stick to the rest of the wax and we're going to melt the remaining of the wax again Done. This time you can pour the last layer at 75 degrees or 170. small overflow there. Okay, and after a few hours, you can remove the finished votive from the mold. Normally they pop out really easily. Here's the result of the different layers. Now it's time to remove the wick pin. Easiest way is to tap the end of the pin, not too hard on a hard surface, and then just pull until the wick pin comes off. I'm using wood here, but actually it's better to use either 
a stone or a metal object. Wicking time. Just insert the wick at the base of the candle, push until the top sticks to the wax, and you're done. There you go. Now some trimming needed. We normally cut them to about eight millimeters. First for tips mate, now we'll see how we can make them with either beeswax, rapeseed wax and soy wax. So here are the three different melting pots with the different waxes. And again, we're going to apply some oil on the pin. And the last one that's going to be used for the beeswax, I grease completely because beeswax is rather sticky. You don't want it to stay stuck in the mold. So soy wax is ready first. Temperature is 75 degrees Celsius, so 170 Fahrenheit. And again, pour it just one millimeter under the rim. The rib seat wax and the beeswax are ready at about the same time, so we're going to pour these now. Same temperature, 75, for the rib seat wax. And I made a small mistake. I poured the beeswax at the same temperature, 75. I should have poured it a bit hotter. Like the caption sets, more like 80 degrees. Twenty minutes later, and the only wax that's misbehaving is, of course, soy wax. And after those 20 minutes, it's time to do the second pour on all three of them. I made the holes that appeared in the soy wax a bit larger. It's easier to fill them. Okay, second pour is done. And as you can see, again, soy wax is having some issues. So I'll just go and use the heat gun, melt the surface again, and that should take care of it. There you go. Done. After four hours it's time to unmold the candles i'm happy to say that the soy wax votive turned out 
rather good. I did use a Peter Brand soy wax because the regular one used for container candles is way too soft. Ripseed is perfect. Didn't even need a third pour. Beeswax, as you can see, I poured a little bit too cold and that resulted in a not very nice base. And again, let's put the wick in place. Trim the wick. And your little votives are ready to be burnt. Don't forget to always burn them in a votive holder, a fitting one, otherwise you'll end up with a big puddle of wax on your table or furniture or whatever and you don't want that. There you go. All done. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos in the future. Thank you for watching. Happy crafting and see you soon.